here we are on the download page and our download is complete so let's install this when you click on this .msi uh, file, the download file, will pr will be prompted to a Windows installer if you want to keep the default directory location then you should go ahead and click next but if you want to change the location then place it in some other directory or disk then you should go ahead and click on change but this is really okay if you want to uh, keep it in C drive but the recommended setting is that you should keep your software in, in a separate folder or separate disk because crowding up C the C disk the local disk will cause problems or performance errors while you download and install more and more software so let's click next and once you click on this install this will automatically start installing your software because I'm not going to uh, install it as uh, I've already installed it so once you install this software you'll get this brackets brand new bracket software and you should always keep this updated this bracket software has another added advantage of uh, including your Photoshop files you can also uh, design your web layouts in Photoshop and uh, bring it on brackets and create a markup using your HTML JavaScript and CSS so but you need a separate account in your as as an account as in in Adobe's sections but it's just for your information that you can also integrate your Photoshop layouts with your brackets with your brackets software so th this is really easy to uh, manipulate your codes and it's quite interactive in the sense that uh, you can go on using the major number of programming languages with this software so let's create a separate folder for our practice and we'll know it as JS and because we're going to create a separate file for our first JavaScript code so we need to create something like um, first code you can name it in uh, you can name it as long as it's valid in the sense that it does not um, uh, it, it contains the .js extension because every JavaScript file, the external files that you create or the external scripts that you create needs to contain the extension of .js otherwise your computer won't understand what language is this so yeah and we have our file created and now let us open this in brackets So the first thing that we are going to see is how to create a variable. In the next video, we'll see how these variables are stored, what is a variable and how this works inside our compilers. We'll see, we'll have an in-depth look at variables, then we'll move on to functions and how they work for our uh, JavaScript code. So let's call this uh, first variable and assign the value assign a string value to it don't worry I'll explain the code in the next video so just go along and practice with me so let's write something this is my first variable initialization at first you won't understand all of this but I'll explain what is variable de declaration and variable initialization in the next video so stay tuned and let's output this let's output this uh, on our browser and let us save this because this code needs to have its uh, sibling and uh, it's, it's sibling of HTML page it can't run on its own so we need to create an HTML page and refer it to that HTML page so let's call it first code dot HTML or you can also write dot HTML it's just the same thing so let's open this up in brackets and create our first markup 
the latest version of HTML is HTML5 so we need a way to tell the browser that we are going to uh, output our HTML codes as HTML5 codes so we need our declaration as doc type this doc type this declaration will tell the browser that we are going to use HTML5 codes or HTML5 markup so let's start writing our code and we need to reference our uh, JavaScript code that we just wrote inside our head section because the head section will always be printed first on the browser so we'll be using the script tag and the source attribute or the src attribute to reference our javascript code so this is the file that we created with .js extension and perhaps we don't need a body right now but let's just create to check what happens this is an html code let's make this a paragraph so this is a simple web page that we created along with the first javascript file external script that we included inside our uh, html page so let's run this on s on at least two browsers for now so let's run this html page remember that javascript won't run by its own it needs an h it needs an html page to uh, execute its code let's run this first on google chrome and see what happens it works perfectly all right and we can see that the javascript alert has popped up and we see that the value that we uh, initialized the variable the first variable that we created for our javascript file it has been printed on this pop-up so let's click ok and now after the head section has been executed on the browser the DOM or the browser then moves on to the body section and it executes this HTML code now let us see what happens when we want to output this inside Mozilla Firefox okay this does the same thing it first goes on printing the pop-up or uh, the variable that we passed inside the alert function that we included inside our JavaScript file it prints the pop-up along with the variable value don't worry about this variable or the value or the initialization or declaration that I'm talking about I'll be explaining it, that in the next section so let's just uh, I hope you can bear with me and so let's o click OK on this and then it goes on printing the body so it works perfectly alright and why don't we just try out in Internet Explorer Internet Explorer is quite different than the other browsers because we see that Internet Explorer uses the ActiveX controls I, I think you can see this clearly to check block or allow your JavaScript code so it is actually printing the body first we can see this on our browser this is Internet Explorer and it is asking me whether I want to uh, enable the ActiveX controls so this ActiveX controls have the ability to manipulate and control the JavaScript code that we pass along inside the browser so because this is a client-side code this needs to be downloaded the JavaScript code along with the HTML file needs to be downloaded on your browser and then once it's downloaded it will be printed or shown on your web page on your uh, browser as a web page so this has the ability this gives the ability to the browser to control your JavaScript codes so what happens if I go on clicking allow blocked content so when I click on allowing this blocked content the browser refreshes and it starts over again it goes at the beginning of the HTML page and it goes on printing the head first and this pops up this creates a pop-up window and it prints out the variable that we just passed along inside our first variable uh, that we named as first variable 
OK and let's click OK on this and then it goes on printing this body section normally like any other browser. So that was it and stay tuned for the next video and we'll be discussing about variables and we'll have an in-depth analysis of what and how variables are stored and how important are they inside any programming language.